Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New this noon, an Air Force chaplain stationed at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland taken away in handcuffs. Major Jesse McKee Howard has been charged with online solicitation of a minor. The 41 year old is the chaplain for the 433rd Airlift Wing, an Air Force Reserve unit made up of roughly 3,400 service members stationed at JBSA Lackland. A spokesperson for the reserve unit says he was an active duty when he was arrested yesterday. We are working to find out what exactly led to Howard's arrest. The Bear County Sheriff's Office calling it the largest meth lab bust ever in this area. Deputies along with federal drug agents raided a home in northeast Bear County last night. They say they found millions of dollars worth of meth as well as all the tools to make it. Katrina Weber reports the bust also took neighbors by surprise. On a cul-de-sac in Northeast Bear County, sheriff's deputies say trouble was cooking. Those chemicals had the capability of blowing the, the roof right off of that house. Sheriff Javier Salazar announced last night what may be the biggest local meth lab bust ever. He shared images from inside the home on Lake Grove near Woodlake Parkway, showing what he says was drug cooking equipment and buckets of raw liquid meth. Salazar says they also found close to $4 million in finished product and nearly half a million in heroin. Undercover deputies were working uh, along with, with a DEA, some DEA task force folks, and they initially made a traffic stop. Salazar says during that stop, they arrested 39-year-old Jose Villasana Hernandez, who had 10 kilos of meth and two children in his car. Then that led them to the home. All of this comes as a surprise to neighbors. They say they rarely saw evidence of anything or anyone being inside this house. In fact, hardly ever see any cars. And it's probably because I'm in bed, you know, when they, when they frequent the house. Still, Peggy Gonzalez was happy to see a suited up crew doing the cleanup this morning. The bottom line is the hand of God protected us, obviously, from any explosion. Also being cared for are the children who were with the suspect. Salazar says they were taken into protective custody. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Other top stories that we're following this noon. Police say a man was intoxicated and speeding when he ran over a homeless person on the north side and killed him. Now that suspect is facing charges. Officers tell us 24 year old Christian Alexis Casares was driving on the access road of Loop 410 near Vance Jackson around midnight. Police say Casares was speeding, took a turn too fast and jumped a curb. And that's when he hit a man who was sleeping under a bridge and then crashed into a concrete wall. According to officers, Casares then walked away from the scene. However, officers found him. He was arrested and booked for intoxication manslaughter. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. And police piecing together what led up to a stabbing on the north side of San, rather, the, just north of downtown. Officers say that a man and a woman were sitting in a car when another woman walked up to their vehicle. Police say they got into an argument. The suspect stabbed the man in his arm. The victim and his passenger then drove to a gas station on Blanco and Hildebrand and called for help. The man was taken to the hospital and should be okay. At the last check, police still had not found that suspect. Bear County is continuing its upward trend when it comes to the coronavirus. The latest report from Metro Health shows an increase in cases and hospitalizations. 353 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. That includes 61 patients from El Paso. 129 people are in the intensive care unit and 62 patients are on ventilators. Also on the rise, our seven day average. It's now at 283. That's up by more than 40 since Tuesday. Metro Health also says two more people in our area have died due to COVID. And across the country, 150,000 new cases on Thursday alone. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. Now, the seven day average now is a staggering 71% higher than it was about two weeks ago. The coronavirus is now infecting more Americans every day than it has at any time during this deadly pandemic. And the increasing number of COVID-19 patients is overwhelming doctors and nurses. Nearly a third of hospitals now say their ICU beds are at 80% capacity. According to COVID Tracking Project, CDC Director Robert Redfield is urging people to take precautions. I don't think it's uh, unlikely in the 
next week or two that we won't be having a million cases a week uh, in this country. On the vaccine front, Pfizer says it hopes to distribute 7.6 million doses of the vaccine per day if and when it's approved. Pfizer Pharmaceuticals released positive preliminary data about its experimental coronavirus vaccine this week. And the company hopes to apply for regulatory approval by the end of the month. Tropical Storm Etta racing off the southeast Atlantic seacoast late Thursday, spreading heavy rains and gusty winds all around the Carolinas. That's after the storm hit Florida and killed at least one person. ABC's Rob Marciano is in North Carolina with more. North Carolina sadly hit hard again by flash floods that are at least associated with a tropical storm. Ada came through here combined with a cold front and we got rain on upwards of 10 inches falling in this part of the Piedmont. Some of the terrain cannot handle it, including this roadway, one of many two lane roads that got washed out by these rushing waters. That's a, probably a six foot culvert pipe down there that couldn't handle the force of the water. And it's not just infrastructure that got affected. There were people that were caught up in these flood waters, at least seven fatalities, still some people missing. Dozens of rescues not only across this part of the state but down in Charlotte, North Carolina, where they had a record setting rain there. The storm itself is moving finally out to sea, but not before making a notable mark. It's been the longest living named storm formed in November since 1912. And guess what? There's another storm forming in the Caribbean. We're likely to have our 30th named storm of this record setting season, and that's likely to head towards Central America, which got hit hard by Ada just about a week ago. We'll track it to see if it turns to the north. Rob Marciano, ABC News, Concord, North Carolina. And the tropics are heating up again. Plus, we've got a front this week. And what does that mean for your forecast? We'll have the latest coming up. And you are looking at last year's Spurs jerseys. The Spurs will be showing off a new look jersey this year. Can't give it away just yet. Larry Mears with the unveil coming up in a few minutes in sports. This morning, several people gearing up for their naturalization ceremonies. However, because of COVID-19, the special occasion looked a bit different. We're going to take a look after the break. More than 200 people are now U.S. citizens after taking part in several naturalization ceremonies. Usually these ceremonies take place indoors. However, due to the pandemic, people representing 60 different countries gathered at local parks, Photojournalist Asian Bermia brings us the sights and sounds from Breckenridge Park as people took their oath of allegiance. Whataburger or In N Out? Oh, Whataburger. Whataburger. Are you kidding me? Like in N Out is trash. Today I am in an official ceremony to get my American citizenship. Finally, the day is here where I become a citizen. I'm originally from the UK. I'm originally from uh, Mexico. I am not alone. I'm here with my parents. After three no. Two cancel interviews. Finally, in October, I was able to attend my interview. Here we are. We've been waiting for it for a long time, and for all of us, for me especially, I'm about to be graduating college, and so it's an exciting time to know that we're officially going to be dual citizens and have the citizenship and be able to know that we're here and we're good to go. I moved here 15 years ago, and this truly is the uh, land of opportunity. There's been times of it's very interesting not being an American citizen and having to check that different box on a lot of paperwork, school testing. But now to have that no longer be something that separates me is exciting. We're going through this together and uh, I'm sure everybody's very excited to, to be here and finally complete this process. One of my big dreams is to work for the National Park Service. And so in order to do that, I have to be an American citizen. And so today is kind of that first stepping stone to really let me pursue the future that I'm looking for. I'm finally um, happy to call this my, my permanent home. What better way to become a citizen by wearing uh, red, white, and blue? Awesome ceremony. Congratulations. Yes. To all of them. Welcome Good. aboard. Yeah. Great uh, stuff. And you picked a good day to become naturalized citizen or become citizen. It's been nice. You know, the, the temperatures have been comfortable. I know we haven't had a, lot of, a whole lot of rain, but at least the, the numbers have been nice uh, even during the afternoons. Uh, the aquifer holding steady today. It's uh, right there at 658.9, so uh, no big issues here in the pollen count. No big issues either. Mold is low. It's at 150. We've got some tropical development, and uh, we've got a front this weekend. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Also coming up, a new organization asking for your help so they can do some good in our community. How they want to assist adults who are struggling with homelessness.
A new organization in San Antonio is asking for used shoe donations. Parmiente is hosting a shoe and sock drive in benefit of adults living in these streets and then teaming up with the local businesses to make them look new. Alicia Beretta tells us what inspired the drive and how long we have to donate. Good afternoon. Well, here's what you have to do. Check under your bed or look towards the very, very back of your closet to look for those shoes that you probably haven't worn in a while and donate them. But here's the thing, those socks, the socks have to be new. This is an effort that really started back in March. Para Mi Gente is a nonprofit organization that was founded in that month of this year by Celeste Ramirez. She's completed one other shoe drive, a menstrual product drive, and does weekly meal distributions for adults who are struggling with homelessness. Ramirez says she notices sometimes their shoes don't have laces, have holes, don't match, or sometimes they're barefoot. So she's encouraging people to donate their used shoes and has teamed up with a shoe cleaning business here in town, Soulmate, to clean and sanitize something she says is a basic necessity. You know, everybody deserves to have warm feet and a fresh pair of shoes, you know, some that don't have, you know, holes in their soles or holes in their socks. We were like, let's, you know, put together this shoe drive. So we are accepting um, primarily sneakers. We're not accepting any kids shoes at the time or any heels. So just primarily sneakers, boots, anything of that sort. The full story is on KSAT.com, including how the shoes will be cleaned and sanitized and where you can drop them off in time for distribution in early to mid-December. And their goal is to have about 300 pairs to donate. And the last day to do so is Saturday, November 21st. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And there are more opportunities to help those in need in the Alamo City. We teamed up with our KSET community partners as well. This is for kids' shoes, zapatos, and the San Antonio Police Department. They are kicking off a shoe drive that benefits only children. If you would like to make a donation, you can drop off new shoes at any SAPD substation through November 30th. You can also make a monetary donation online. We have a closer look at the map and the link to donate on ksetcommunity.com. Also on ksetcommunity.com, we have details about a free flu shot drive that's happening tomorrow. To get your shot, you need to go to Freeman Coliseum tomorrow starting at 8 in the morning. The drive ends at noon, but you need to register before you show up. Each person getting a shot has to register in advance. Most insurances are accepted and shots are available to those without insurance at no cost. And if you can't make it this weekend, you're going to get another chance next Saturday, November 21st at Texas A&M University, San Antonio. You can register right now for either drive on KSATcommunity.com. Back to Celeste. She was cleaning up those shoes pretty good. I know. She look. gave me some ideas. Yeah. I've got some shoes I need to donate. Pretty sure. sharp. Need to get out in, uh, in your tennis shoes and do some walking today and tomorrow, right? Ah, like sure. I mean, uh, like I said, Tim shoes have been really pretty fantastic this uh, this fall so far. We're looking maybe for some chillier temperatures next week. We started off with some fog and drizzle this morning. Let's take a look at the time lapse. And uh, you can see kind of how it unfolded there. Sorry, the camera moved a little bit, but uh, we had the fog early and then the sun came out. And now we're back to sort of mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the 70s at this hour. And you look at the cloud coverage really starting to spread back in. So we had a good break there and that boosted temperatures. And now uh, we'll get a cloud deck that'll sort of sit over us for at least a little bit. And that may keep us from getting all that much warmer. We're thinking upper 70s, low 80s for highs this afternoon. And right now we're at 76 at Stinson, 77 Port SA, 81 Pleasanton. Underneath the clouds out west, 75 in Uvalde, 72 Curvo. It's a little cooler up there in Fredericksburg. There's some cooler air that sank into the hill country this morning. It's kind of getting shoved back to the north at this hour. And so most of us will be warm. There are a couple of showers on the radar. Boy, that's great to see. We have got a couple of light returns down around Bevo and Victoria, not having a whole lot of success making their way up towards San Antonio. And if we see anything today, it'll be on the light side, but at least there is something on the radar. And we may see a bit more of this uh, tonight into tomorrow. Just these uh, light sprinkly showers here. We've seen a little bit of that around Goliad. Here's what our future cast looks like. So clouds off and on for the rest of this afternoon and tonight. And then they'll really fill in overnight into tomorrow morning. We'll start off cloudy with maybe a little bit of drizzle, some patchy fog to start your Saturday. And then by Saturday afternoon, we break out into some sun. Pretty similar to what we've seen last couple days. The one change arrives Sunday. 
Hey, here comes a front. This is around four o'clock, so this front's probably going to move through pre dawn. We'll get a thin line of showers with it. It won't amount to much, and then behind it, skies uh, clear. We'll get a good northerly wind, and uh, it'll be a little cooler Sunday afternoon, and certainly as we get into Monday. As far as the dew points go, it's been pretty sticky, uh, but that number will drop off significantly on Sunday with that front. Dew points back in the 30s, and then it will climb somewhat uh, through the rest of next week, but not necessarily humid or muggy. And speaking of the dry streak, we got to bring it up. It has been a long while since we've had any significant rain since September 21st, 52 days ago since we've had at least a tenth of an inch or more. So just to keep that in mind, it's uh, still pretty dry out there. Here's the big picture as we look across the country uh, system up there across the Pacific Northwest. This is the system that will bring a front through as uh, we get into uh, Sunday. And then uh, again, not much going on at the moment across the rest of the country. And then we'll go down to the Caribbean and we have uh, tropical depression 31 winds at 35 miles per hour gusting to 45. It's moving west southwest at about seven miles per hour and the track with this one and it will become iota we think uh, takes it right towards uh, Nicaragua and Honduras the same spot that got hit by Ada not good news for Central America and this could be a category two storm when it hits or makes landfall and then probably producing quite a bit of rain across Central America. So this busy 2020 tropical season just continues. Here's what our forecast looks like today. Mostly cloudy uh, 81 by four o'clock and then dropping down into the 70s this evening in the extended forecast. We'll go 84 tomorrow with some drizzle and fog early morning shower on Sunday, then turning windy and clearing 74 73 Monday after starting off at 48. And then some pretty nice weather through much of next week, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Looks pretty good, except for the lack of rain. Been a while since we got to say the phrase quarterback controversy for the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. But, you know, we missed that. Yeah, I mean, ever since uh, Dak took over as QB1, there has been no controversy. Yeah. But with him injured and Andy Dalton getting some starts and then he couldn't play, Garrett Gilbert started against the Steelers and did a good job. So who's going to start when the Cowboys come back to action, Dalton or Gilbert? And UTSA football should feel a bit more fresh for their game tomorrow coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. When the Dallas Cowboys return to action in week 11 at the Minnesota Vikings, who will be starting quarterback? That's a huge question. If he's cleared of COVID-19 restrictions, will it be Andy Dalton? Or how about fourth string quarterback Garrett Gilbert, who seemed to energize the Cowboys offense against the Steelers? Here's what Jerry Jones said when he was asked, Dalton or Gilbert? Andy is, uh, when we signed Andy, uh, I really thought we had arguably the best backup quarterback uh, that I've ever uh, been associated with, and we've had some good ones in Jason Garrett, and I don't want to uh, overlook guys like that, or Bernie Kosar, which are really names from the past, but still. Uh, to have Andy Dalton as your backup quarterback when, in fact, Andy is, in my mind, a very legitimate starter. And on the other side of the ball, Jerry called linebacker Jalen Smith one of his cornerstones. Jalen leads the Cowboys with 89 tackles this season, which is second best in the NFL. And over in the AFC South, the Houston Texans, well, their starting quarterback Deshaun Watson says he's excited to play in Cleveland for the first time in his NFL career. Up to 12,000 fans will be allowed inside First Energy Stadium, so the dog pound won't be as loud as usual. That lack of barking could make it a bit easier for the Texans to win consecutive games for the first time this season. I feel great. I mean, that's what we need to stack on. This is you got to continue to ride the wave and ride the momentum. And this is a great opportunity to go on the road against a great uh, AFC opponent uh, who's playing really, really good football. It's coming off a of bye week and who's probably well rested. So, you know, we got to go out there and give everything we got. Um, but it would be real good to, to get back to back wins for sure. Texan starting running back David Johnson hasn't practiced this week due to a concussion. He remains under the NFL concussion protocol and is expected to miss Sunday's game at the Browns. After their game at Rice last Saturday was postponed due to COVID-19 issues, UTSA football is ready to host UTEP for homecoming tomorrow afternoon at 2. And hopefully they'll get through their final two rounds of COVID-19 testing on the right side. The guys were bummed about not being able to play last week, but after eight straight games, the Roadrunners needed a break. You want eight weeks straight, you know, you know, and uh, it just it takes a toll on your body sooner or later. And so those little few days for recovery, it, it makes a huge difference. 
UTSA and UTEP will meet for the eighth time tomorrow. The Roadrunners lead the all-time series 5-2. And check it out. The Spurs released this video showing off their Fiesta 2020-21 City Edition uniform, describing them as old school, new style, authentic heritage, where big and bright meets vintage vibes. Three colors, endless respect. The new uniforms features the team's historic Fiesta colors and bold diagonal stripes of teal, pink, and orange on a black jersey top with San Antonio across the chest and old school script. Spurs City Edition product will make its debut December 3rd at 9 a.m. for sale and pre-order at the La Contenta Spurs Fan Shop and SpursFanShop.com. This season marks the first year that the fan favorite Fiesta colors will make an appearance on the game jerseys and I'm telling you, I yeah. really like I that. like oh, this. Look. This is a nice retro look. I've missed those colors. Absolutely. You know how many people have those jerseys in their closet at home or somewhere back in the back of the yeah. room, Probably hanging on the box. wall. Yep. I can pull it down again and wear it. <laughs> exactly right. Old school. We like that. What is old is new again. Thank you, Larry. You got it. Hey, new today at 5. Cue the Wi-Fi. If you and your family are working from home, having a stable internet connection is important. That's where a Wi-Fi extender comes in. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz takes a look at which devices work best to solve your Wi-Fi woes. That's today at 5 after entertainment tonight. We'll be President-elect Joe Biden has increased his electoral college lead over President Trump, with ABC News projecting him to be the winner of the battleground state of Arizona now, bringing his electoral vote count to 290. As ABC's Rena Roy explains, President Trump, though, still won't concede or acknowledge the turnout of the 2020 election. President Trump hasn't spoken a word in public for over a week now, instead firing off multiple false tweets about widespread voter fraud. Now the president's own Department of Homeland Security calling last week's election the most secure in American history, saying in a statement, there is no evidence that any voting system was in any way compromised. I'm confident that American voters are going to decide the 2020 election. A source tells ABC Chris Krebs, the nation's top cybersecurity official who publicly debunked Trump's ballot fraud claims on Twitter, now expects to be fired. President-elect Joe Biden now has 73 more electoral votes than President Trump after ABC News projected Biden the winner in Arizona. But most congressional Republicans still haven't publicly acknowledged his win. And former President Obama is blasting those Republicans who haven't accepted reality in a new 60 Minutes interview. It is one more step in delegitimizing not just the incoming Biden administration, but democracy generally. And that's a dangerous path. But GOP opposition seems to be dwindling. At least 10 Republican senators, including Chuck Grassley of Iowa, are calling on the Trump administration to stop blocking the Biden team from receiving classified intelligence briefings. Do you think that Joe Biden should get access to classified briefings in order to prepare for uh, the transition here? I would think, especially on, on, uh, on the classified briefings, yeah. the answer is yes. A key finding from the 9-11 Commission showed that the rocky transition during the disputed 2000 election may have actually contributed to the 9-11 attacks. That's why experts say there could be major national security concerns with Biden still not receiving the classified briefings he's entitled to. Rena Roy, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. Mike Pompeo expected to be the first Secretary of State to visit a settlement on the West Bank. A source familiar with the trip's details says Pompeo's trip next week is part of a visit to Israel and several other countries. Israeli settlements in the occupied territory are regarded as illegal under international law. Pompeo is also planning on visiting a winery in the settlement, which named a wine after the Secretary of State. In the latest involving the coronavirus, the World Health Organization has reportedly been in contact with the Russian Institute behind a coronavirus vaccine. In a statement released today, the organization explains it looks forward to receiving data from the Sputnik 5 candidate vaccine. Russia's sovereign wealth fund says it is 92 percent effective. The Gamaleya Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology expressed interest in applying for the WHO emergency use listing. The organization added that it has not yet pre-qualified any COVID-19 vaccine nor issued an emergency use listing. 
and that any pre-qualification or listing under the emergency use procedure is confidential. Non-essential businesses in El Paso got a second chance to stay open despite COVID-19 cases being on the rise there. A state appeals court said the shutdown was originally scheduled to last until December 1st. The judge extended the order Wednesday, but a group of local restaurants and Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton argued that it went beyond Governor Greg Abbott's own executive order that outlines what limits can be placed on private businesses across the state. The final resolution could come as early as today. If you're looking to buy a house, you need to prepare yourself. There may be some sticker shock involved. That's because the U.S. home price is surging as people are rushing to take advantage of record low mortgage rates. The National Association of Realtors says the median home price is now about $313,000. That's up 12 percent from a year ago. The metro areas with the largest price jumps last quarter were Bridgeport, Connecticut, Crestview, Florida, and Pittsfield, Massachusetts, all with price jumps near 27%. Outside with live cave, you know, some of the people up north are already suffering those cold temperatures, have to stay indoors, which may not be good for COVID, they say. So we need to take advantage of these warm temperatures and get outside. Yeah, you can still get outside. It, it is nice. Uh, temperatures in the 70s right now, that's pretty ideal. Uh, we do have some colder air just to the north. As you look at the state of Texas, the cold stuff is up there around Amarillo. When I say cold, it's 50. Uh, that's not bitterly cold. 47 in Lubbock, 48 Wichita Falls. There's a stationary boundary that sort of bisects the state, and uh, you'll get the colder air to the north. This frontal boundary kind of falls apart, but we'll get a stronger surge of cooler air that arrives on Sunday, and that's what is going to cool us down here. In the meantime, we've got 70s and 80s still on the map. And quite a bit of cloud cover too. We've had a good amount of cloud cover surge in from the Gulf of Mexico. That was with us this morning, fog drizzle. And it's sort of sticking around as we thought it might today. So mostly cloudy skies for much of us. There are some better breaks in the clouds as you get up towards New Braunfels and San Marcos and Blanco and Kerrville at this hour. Week in forecast, you got plans? Looks okay, 84 degrees tomorrow. We'll start off with clouds and drizzle, but we should break out into some sun during the afternoon. We're up to 84. That front that we talked about comes through Sunday morning, brings with it a slight chance for a shower, and then it turns windy and cooler. It will be pretty breezy on Sunday with a high of 74. Ursula. Thank you so much, Justin. Thanksgiving's going to be here soon, and even though celebrations may include less people, that doesn't mean you have to skimp on the food. We're going to take a look at what side dish Texans are choosing as their favorite. And Tiger Woods off to a Tiger Woods type Masters. Larry Mir is with more coming up in a few minutes in sports. A major milestone for NASA and SpaceX taking place this weekend. We have the details after the break. Hello everyone, this is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. A group of researchers over at Deutsche Bank proposing a 5% privilege tax on those who continue to work remotely after the pandemic. According to the researchers, the extra funds can be used to subsidize those displaced due to the coronavirus. As millions continue to work remotely, many have been able to save a large chunk of money on typical costs like transportation. Meanwhile, you can now buy, sell, and hold cryptocurrencies via your PayPal account. The fintech company dropping its wait list for the new service it will give users access to a slew of different currencies due to high demand for the feature paypal increasing the weekly purchase limit from ten thousand dollars a week to twenty thousand a week and a major milestone for nasa and spacex taking place this weekend tomorrow night spacex will launch another round of astronauts to space in their nasa certified spacex crew dragon capsule and the falcon 9 rocket the flight will launch from kennedy space center on saturday night now this is the first spacecraft nasa has certified for manned missions in nearly four 40 years. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. With the peak of online holiday shopping right around the corner, a new survey warns us that porch pirates are getting ready to set sail. A survey by Finder.com reports that porch pirates account for 5.5 four billion dollars in thefts over the last few years actually just the last year 
Consumer advocates worry that the problem's only going to get worse with online purchases expected to be up 11% over last year. Experts say adding a home security camera or requiring a signature release can deter thieves from stealing your deliveries. Amazon making it easier for more Americans to shop from home. The Seattle-based multinational tech company expanding in-garage delivery to more than 4,000 cities nationwide. Dallas and Houston are two of the cities on the list. This service is contactless and available to Prime members. Amazon customers can also get groceries delivered from Whole Foods Market or Amazon Fresh. All right, from the turkey, the stuffing, pecan pie, one of the biggest debates is what is the best Thanksgiving side dish. According to a recent report, green bean casserole is the most popular side dish here in Texas. While it's most popular here in the Lone Star State, mashed potatoes seems to be the overall favorite for most states. The second most popular is mac and cheese. Data comes from what people searched for most last November. I go with green bean casserole. Mm, I'm thinking they haven't tasted my sweet potato casserole. But you got that New Orleans thing going, <laughs> so the Louisiana thing. Well, you know, it's got like six sticks of butter and, you know. <laughs> That's really what makes it good. Five <laughs> cups of sugar. Do you put the marshmallows on top? Is no. That, okay. No. I'm not you don't need the marshmallows either. if you cook it my way. <laughs> I like the sound of that. No room for them with all the butter. No, no, lots of butter. That makes everything better. Uh, 77 degrees so far today. 60 was the low this morning. Averages are 73 and 51. Look at these records. 91 set back in 1951. Thankfully, we're not there, nor are, are we anywhere near the 28 that was set back in 2018. We do have a cold front, though. We'll talk about what that means for our weekend forecast coming up. We're all hungry now. Yeah, <laughs> we've all been reminiscing about <laughs> Thanksgiving food. Best and, and we dinner. learned that Justin has a very short list of Thanksgiving foods he likes. That's not true. I, it, well, okay. <laughs> it's kind of true. We've established that. Yeah, I do like most casseroles. Though, and you like sure. asparagus casserole. Yeah, yeah, asparagus. There, there you go. That's random. different. Yeah, yeah. You mix it up a little bit. I like a lot of veggies. I don't know. Kind of weird like that. Uh, we've got football games tonight, guys, uh, and the weather should cooperate. I know we have some that have been canceled, of course, and we've got some college games this weekend canceled. But for those that are going on, we uh, have comfortable temperatures. 74 kickoff, 71 at halftime. Uh, Southeasterly wind uh, will probably be partly cloudy for the most part. And then we look outside right now. We've got most of the cloudy skies at the airport. 77 degrees southeasterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. 77 in Boulevard, 79 New Braunfels. You'll find some warmer stuff down to the south. 81 in Pleasanton, 74 Tarpley, 73 in Kerrville, 78 out in Del Rio. Then cooler stuff off to the north. There was a frontal battery that uh, tried to move into the hill country. It's now sort of retreating, uh, but we've still got uh, quite a bit of cloud cover and a lot of humidity, too. Dew points in the mid 60s, if not close to 70. So that puts us in the muggy to oppressive category. You can feel it for sure if you're going to be out and about. And then as we go through time here, sort of fast forwarding through into Saturday morning, still very muggy. That should lead to some drizzle and I think some fog again tomorrow morning. But by the time we get into Sunday, here comes our frontal boundary and here comes the drier air. Dew points should fall off dramatically. So you're going to notice it is much, much drier by Sunday afternoon. And as we look at the visible satellite picture right now, you see the cloud cover. It's pretty expansive. We've got a couple showers mixed in here or there. Uh, it's not really amounting to much, but at least there's a little bit on the radar. We noticed that out west of Eagle Pass and around Del Rio, too. And then as we zoom in a little bit closer here on Bear County, a nice patch of clouds coming through at this hour. So that's going to keep things mostly cloudy with a few breaks probably again later this afternoon and this evening. So the future cast. Calls for, uh, again, partly to mostly cloudy conditions around 6 o'clock. And then as we get into tomorrow, clouds fill in, shows a couple showers, maybe some drizzle mixed in there, very similar to this morning. And then by Saturday afternoon, we break out into some sun. Should be a warm day tomorrow. That frontal boundary, the timing right now, brings it in pre-dawn. So this is around 4 o'clock, thin line of showers right along the front. Uh, not, uh, not drought busting rain by any stretch of the imagination, but some of our eastern counties could get a shower or two. And then we clear out again. Sunday evening, it turns breezy, cooler. We should get some temperatures in the 40s by the time we wake up on Monday, even into Tuesday, possibly. Latest update on Tropical Depression 31. This is newly formed. It will likely become Iota, the next named storm. A hurricane season ends at the end of this month, by the way, but we're still going here because, you know, 2020 has just been incredibly active. Latest track on this does turn into a Category 2 storm. We move towards Nicaragua, Honduras. 
same places that saw the effects of Ada, which was a, a massive uh, catastrophic storm. So this is just adding insult to injury here. There's going to be a lot of rain across Central America going forward. Stays well to the south of the United States at this point, uh, but those folks there in Central America, uh, it's, it doesn't look good. There's going to be a lot of heavy rain with that. 79 degrees by 2 o'clock, 81 by 4 o'clock. That'll be our high temperature and the mostly cloudy going into this evening. And looking ahead to tomorrow, 84, some fog and drizzle to start, 10% chance of a shower. That'll be the case early on Sunday. And then windy and clearing out. Looks like we may see a few clouds Monday and Tuesday, but the weather looks pretty nice. 70s for highs, lows in the 40s and 50s, guys. Very good, Justin. Thank you. And I have to bring this up. I know you mentioned it yesterday. And uh -huh. They actually played the first round yesterday, but it's weird seeing the Masters in November. It is definitely it's weird <clears throat> seeing, yeah, the Masters in November. What I tell you is not weird, though, is boxing this time of the year. And San Antonio boxer Joshua Franco is getting ready to defend his title tomorrow. And speaking of the Masters and Tiger, well, he was pretty much all smiles yesterday. Coming up. USA Roadrunners are rolling along as they prep to host UTEP tomorrow afternoon. That's after the Roadrunners had to postpone their first game of the season against Rice last weekend due to COVID-19. UTSA is one of only six teams in the nation that has played eight games this season during the pandemic, but those eight games were played in eight straight weeks. So Roadrunners offensive coordinator Barry Loney was asked if the Rice postponement was a blessing in disguise. We were thankful to that our administration uh, had uh, been able to piece together through our conference a 12 game schedule where a lot of people weren't able to play you know uh, that many games or get that you know matched up like that so but we also knew that having 12 on the docket in a row was going to create a challenge and we knew this time of the year you know down the stretch run when the games get really critical um, you know that was going to pre present a challenge for us and so uh, the, the way it worked out was probably about ideal for us to play several games in a row then take a breather Kick is scheduled for 2 p.m. tomorrow at the Dome. Almost two weeks ago, Mario Barrios put on a show for his hometown of San Antonio at the Elmo Dome. Halloween night, he finished off Ryan Carl with the TKO in the sixth round, improving to 26-0 while defending his WBA World Super Lightweight belt, the first 210 boxer to defend his title. Now this Saturday night, his good friend and fellow SA World Champ, Joshua Franco, will try to defend his WBA World Super Flyweight title belt against Andrew Maloney. Wednesday, we sat down with Barrios to get his thoughts on Joshua defending his crown. There, there's a question in my mind. I mean, he's, he's going to defend his title, and I mean, we're going to stay with, you know, two world titles in San Antonio. What are the challenges of fighting a guy for a second time? Uh, I mean, just given the fact that both of you guys know each other's style, um, he may already have picked up on a couple bad habits he may have. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it's your job as a fighter, you know, to, like I said, I mean, when you get in there to adapt and um, to do whatever you can to win. I mean, Josh, you know, they call him, you know, the, the professor for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a very skilled boxer. Uh, so, I mean, like, again, I mean, there, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, he, he's going to keep that, that title here in San Antonio as well. We'll have more from our sit down with champion Barrio Sunday night an instant replay as well as a recap of Franco Maloney 2. Tiger Woods looked like the Tiger of old during the first round of the Masters yesterday. The defending champion and five time Masters winner posted his first bogey free round in a major championship in more than a decade with his 468 and three strokes off the lead. I did everything well today. I drove well, hit my irons well and putted well. Um, uh, the only, you know, real bad shot I hit today was at eight. You know, I had a, had a perfect number with a 60 degree sandwich and I hit on the wrong shelf. Uh, but other than that, I did, did everything well. Here. Woods gives back to families seeking asylum here in San Antonio. Plus, gift ideas for all of the Christmas and holidays. Who doesn't like something nice and shiny and sparkly? We check out the newest items from a popular jewelry show, and you can also get the gift of beautiful skin. How you can get this gift set made for people living in the Alamo City. And we all need to know how we can avoid having all the bad luck. So we want to know what your, not superstitions are, but I guess anti-superstitions. What your lucky charm is. Something like that. That's a good way to put it. I couldn't think <laughs> yes. of that. <laughs> Let us know on social media and tag us at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. And we'll share some of that luck during the show when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. My lucky charm is reading the script before you read it. <laughs>